Olá, eu sou o Vinícius Langoni, da Zequest, e hoje estou aqui para trazer até vocês é, Cláudio Basso, CIO do Grupo Azimuth e responsável pela gestão do fundo Azimuth Balanced Forth. Ah, o Cláudio vai falar um pouco para nós sobre qual é o papel dele no grupo, quem são as pessoas, o time que trabalham com ele para fazer a gestão do Azimuth Balanced Fof. Depois, ele vai falar um pouco sobre como é o processo de investimentos e a construção uh, do portfólio do Balanced Fof. E, por fim, os temas atuais aí que nós estamos trabalhando uh, neste fundo. So, hi Claudio, how are you? Hi Vinicius, I'm uh, very well, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to join you for this interview. And I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak to Brazilian investors. Thank you, Claudio. So as you uh, as you heard, uh, we are very excited to have the Azimuth funds here distributed for the Brazilian retail investors. Uh, Claudio is the CIO of the Azimuth Group and responsible for Balanced Forth. Claudio, could you please tell us a bit about your uh, experience, how long you've been with the group, uh, what is your current, uh, what are your current roles and the team that you count on to manage uh, balanced FAF? Sure, what a pleasure. So I joined the Azimuth Group uh, in 2006, so it's uh, a bit more than 17 years that I'm part of the group. I started my career uh, as a fund of fund manager. Uh, I set up the multi-manager business, business for Azimuth. And uh, over time, I increased my responsibility. And since 2019, I became the chief investment officer here in Luxembourg. And also I took over the responsibility of chief investment officer for the entire group. So I supervise uh, all the functioning of the uh, portfolio management function for the group. I'm responsible for the creation, supervision of the funds, but also uh, for the coordination of the whole investment team of Azimuth. We are very proud to say that we are one of the uh, main international asset management company that has a presence worldwide and uh, among all of our offices uh, in uh, more than 18 countries, uh, we can count on a team of investment professional that is of over 170 persons. So it's a very exciting uh, role to have the possibility to speak and coordinate with all of these people. Great. Uh, Claudio, please tell us how does uh, Azimuth Balanced Forth work? Tell us a bit, uh, what, are, what is the investment process, how the fund selection process goes, how the risk management goes for the fund, what Brazilian ex investors can expect in terms of return, positioning, risk control, and so on. Explain about the fund. Okay, so first information, it is a fund of fund, meaning that the underlying investment to my portfolio are third party funds, so funds managed not by Azimuth, but by other asset management company. We work with more than 100 different asset management companies, and we are analyzing more than 3,000 funds. So the first part uh, of the investment process is starting to uh, find out which are the portfolio manager that are able to deliver alpha over time. Uh, and uh, we are interested not only to find those that are uh, expected to deliver alpha uh, constantly over time because the number is quite limited and in that case the alpha is limited, we are also willing to understand which are the portfolio manager that depending on the changing market condition could deliver really uh, high uh, alpha generation, strong alpha generation for our clients. So uh, we, in order to do that, uh, we have a process that is based on quantitative analysis, uh, part of it based on uh, uh, data provider and software that are available to any uh, asset management company, but we also develop some internal tools over the past uh, 20 years that I'm doing this work uh, that allows us to make much deeper analysis and, and understand better when and how a portfolio manager is able to deliver alpha. Um, the other pillar of the investment process is a, 
let's say, a top-down analysis, meaning that we are looking at macro variables like monetary policy, investment policy, um, strength, strength of the economy, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in order to understand uh, if we are in favorable or unfavorable market conditions, uh, and uh, which uh, asset classes, region, market cap styles, uh, uh, rather than segment of the credit market, could uh, enjoy the strongest return, and where uh, and where we have to stay away, where not to invest. So uh, the combination of uh, the global, the top-down view. And uh, the bottom-up research allows us to build up a portfolio that uh, is the one that is uh, ideal considering the uh, current market conditions. Uh, let's say that in terms of investment approach, uh, I tend to be very focused on uh, uh, risk reward and uh, preservation of capital, meaning that uh, over time, my investment experience, uh, I understood that uh, the the best way to achieve our performance over the long term is mostly by preserving capital during a market downturn also because uh, percentage are uh, a very uh, have a very strange behavior if you lose 50 percent you have then to recover 100 percent uh, in order to go back where you started so the more you fall uh, the more you have to uh, to recover afterwards so for me the preservation of capital is key in my uh, in my investment approach uh, in order to do that, I focus on uh, valuation. So I uh, really try to analyze uh, over the longest uh, time horizon possible uh, where we stand compared to the historical norms, if you are overvaluated, undervaluated. And uh, so try to have a portfolio that is exposed to uh, undervalued assets and out of overvaluated uh, and overvaluated assets. This means that uh, from time to time, I'm also contrarian, meaning that uh, when we are uh, near to a peak in the market and valuation are very high, or when we are close to a bottom in the market and valuation are very low, I tend to, let's say, anticipate the change in the, uh, the market behavior because what I'm interested is not to get the final upside of a bull market, but rather to preserve the capital in the ensuing correction. And when we are close to a bottom, I'm no longer interested if I have still a bit of downside if the bear market uh, continues for, uh, for a while after, because I'm interested in uh, being exposed to the huge rebound that follows a bear market. So uh, this is to say that uh, I am particularly focused on active management. So uh, with my portfolio, it is not necessarily the case that all the time I have performance that are correlated with the market. Sometimes I decorrelated, but this approach allowed me over time to achieve a, a strong performance against the benchmarks and the peers, uh, mostly because, as I said, I was able to, uh, to protect the, um, the performance during market correction. Uh, also, another uh, very important uh, point that I want to highlight is that uh, being a fund, fund manager, so uh, selecting uh, other portfolio managers, uh, uh, I have the possibility to have at my disposal always the uh, portfolio manager that are able to deliver uh, the best performances. And this also allows me that uh, I do not have to be uh, specialized to know each details of each asset classes, each market, each investment stars. I just need to do uh, properly my uh, top-down analysis, and then I leave to the portfolio manager, which is specialized in that asset class markets style, to, uh, to deliver the alpha. And uh, the final point that uh, is a plus in uh, managing a fund of fund is that as uh, I do not have any specific bias, 
uh, because I'm not a specialist on uh, any single asset class market whatsoever, uh, I can be much more objective about which are uh, the, uh, the attractiveness, the prospect of each asset class. Meaning that uh, I have no problem in switching from uh, favoring uh, developed market rather than emerging market, value rather than growth, large cap rather than small cap, because uh, it is not that uh, there is an asset class that I'm not able to invest in. I always have, have in my a list of uh, a short list of funds, someone who is able to um, deliver alpha in all of these asset classes. So uh, in my construction of the portfolio, I have no bias. And this is uh, a plus for, uh, um, for the asset allocation. When you talk about uh, the fund balanced forth, what can our investors here in Brazil expect in terms of uh, returns over the long run? I mean, should they expect uh, equity-like returns, bond-like returns? Should that be correlated to the behavior of uh, European equity markets rather than that U.S. Uh, bond markets? What to expect uh, in terms of returns over the years or volatility or uh, instruments, equities, bonds? Uh, please elaborate on that. Okay, so... Uh, an investor should expect uh, a profile like uh, a balance fund because uh, the investment limits are minimum 30% equity, maximum 60% equity. So the center is 45% equity and the balance is in fixed income. The difference compared to other uh, uh, mixed assets or allocation fund is that uh, the um, my return have been uh, much more stable, less volatile, so uh, uh, a return that were much more of an absolute return fund than a, um, than a full directional um, mixed assets funds. And just to give you an idea, over the past uh, uh, five years, if I uh, take the five year ending in March 2023, so the last available quarter, the fund achieved in your term a performance of plus 40% or roughly 7% annualized on your terms. If, uh, uh, if there was a US dollar edged share classes, considering that the US dollar has been delivering over the past few years higher rates than uh, the euro, so the edging uh, from euro to US dollar class would have had two additional points, meaning that the performance for a US dollar share class would have been four, uh, plus 54% uh, in five years or about 9% annualized uh, with a volatility of about 8%. And uh, so a sharp ratio of uh, uh, close or above 1%. And in terms of exposure, uh, as I said, I am an active manager uh, and over time I changed uh, even materially my asset allocation. Let's say that the reference is for the equity component, the MSCI world, and for the fixed income, it is the global aggregate. So the two main benchmark for, equity, for global equities and global bonds. But uh, I could take uh, a strong bet, uh, overweighting or underweighting, um, emerging market rather than developed market, uh, one style rather than, one, and then another one, so value growth, minimum volatility, quality, etc. And also within fixed income, I changed several times my asset allocation currently in a situation where we have risk-free rates that have been brought back to the highest level of the past 15 years. I'm very happy to have a, a large exposure to um, risk-free, so short-term government bonds, also considering that the curves are inverted, so I prefer to stay in the short end of the curve. Whilst uh, uh, at the moment, I have not at all uh, any credit risk in the portfolio because we are probably headed into a slowdown or a recession. There are several indicators that point out that uh, we will have to face a slowdown or a recession in the second half of this year. And therefore, uh, as uh, credit spreads are quite uh, 
uh, narrow still and not at all at level that are uh, normal uh, during uh, or uh, with the risk of a recession. I prefer not to have exposure to any type of credit uh, and wait for spreads to be wider before uh, panning on that uh, type of assets. And in terms of equity exposure, for the same reason, I'm uh, close to the lowest uh, end of my allowed range, so about 30%. And uh, uh, within equities, uh, I'm actually underweighting uh, the US market and overweighting all other markets in the world. And uh, uh, for about sectors, I am uh, pretty much out of the technology sector where we have valuations that are even higher now than in late 2021 or in 2000. Uh, and to me are not sustainable and I'm preferring other sectors uh, that are either uh, more protective during a downturn or that uh, are trading at a much lower valuation. Wow, great. So you ended up talking about the current positions of the fund. Thank you for that. Uh, just a final question, Claudio. How many funds do you usually have in the portfolio? What is a typical number of funds? Uh, like 5, 10, 20? How much do you d diversificate between managers? And uh, is there any typical turnover between uh, how long a manager uh, can uh, remain within the fund. Uh, could you please uh, tell uh, about that? Yeah. Uh, as I have access to a very wide uh, uh, range of asset management company, more than 100 of funds, more than 3,000, I prefer not to have a concentrated bet in my portfolio, but rather mm -hmm. to diversify the idiosyncratic risk of each portfolio manager, also because I tend to prefer active uh, portfolio manager. So uh, when you have active portfolio manager, you can have idiosyncratic risk, and I want to diversify this as much as possible so that the period of uh, underperformance that someone happens for some of them and that they are able to recover and uh, more than recover uh, later are compensated by other portfolio managers. So on average in, in my fund, uh, there are uh, uh, 50 to 80 positions in the portfolio spread between the equity and the fixed income component. Very well diversificated then. Absolutely. Uh, also because uh, I want to be flexible to change the asset allocation uh, fast if market condition changes. Uh, and in terms of how long a portfolio manager stays uh, in the portfolio or uh, which is the turnover, it really depends on how uh, market condition evolves. So let's just to make two uh, examples. Uh, when the COVID uh, hit uh, in 2020, I had uh, a large exposure, almost uh, all exposure was to uh, growth or quality growth fund manager because it was the only segment of the market that, that, was, um, that was performing well. The cyclical, of course, was underperforming, cyclicals that are uh, mostly part of the, of the value uh, universe. And so I stayed uh, for the biggest part of my portfolio exposed to the US, where there are more growth companies than in other region, and in technology or growth uh, uh, funds. When we had the vaccine, the reopening, uh, the huge fiscal stimulus, this means that uh, the cyclical component would have been uh, the main beneficiaries. So I sold entirely my position in growth fund and I switched entirely to, to value portfolio manager. So uh, it really depends on uh, the catalyst uh, on the market that determines how long uh, a portfolio manager stays in, in my portfolio. Well, very well explained. Uh, uh, we understand that here in Brazil, this brings to us active management, diversification of regions, diversification of risk, as you said, very well spread between managers. And uh, that said, uh, that being managed uh, by you and your team, 
for a very long time within the Azimut group. So in our idea, that brings all that our investors in Brazil need. Confidence in the manager that the work has been done, a good work, a good uh, research work in terms of uh, diligence for each manager that comes into the fund and providing uh, uncorrelated uh, absolute returns within a portfolio that will not correlate it to the positions or to the, their portfolios in Brazil. Uh, we believe this strategy will be a success for us here in Brazil. Thank you, Claudio, for uh, being with us. And uh, we hope we will speak to you soon uh, or bring you to Brazil to, to, to meet our Brazilian investors. Thank you very much, Vinicius, for the occasion to be uh, here today. And uh, with much pleasure, uh, I will be available anytime you need to make updates or even uh, come to Brazil and meet investors. Thank you so much, Claudio. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Obrigado, investidores. Obrigado. Obrigado.